Carmichael to come back and revisit the Form Energy deal with us, among other things as well. Mitch, good morning to you, sir. Good morning, guys. Uh, you all have so much fun. It's, uh, it's, uh, it should be illegal. Uh, I love listening to you. Well, thank you. you got Connor. a great show. Yeah. A lot of folks think we are illegal, Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> I want to offer this up well, right now. Uh, this morning, yeah. I weighed in at 160.0. Bill, how about yourself? Yeah. Not uh, about in the same category. A little bit more, but not much more. Mr. Gilstrap. You know, there are some things we don't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch, it's up to you. Hair, you hairlines to... <laughs> and, uh, and scale readings. It's up to you, Mitch. If you want to give your weight, it's up to you, man. I'm about in your range, about 170. All right. Um, so, yeah. Gilstrap isn't giving up the goods otherwise. So. No, no, no. It's funny. Five hundred dollar sandwich. <laughs> and I, one hundred and eight pounds. He was wrestling in high school at one hundred eight pounds. I don't. I think I was in like fifth grade when he was one hundred eight pounds. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Yeah, I was a little shocked to hear that he was wrestling at the 108. That was, that's pretty low. Uh, yeah. Mitch, let's talk about Form Energy in all seriousness. Yeah, and, and, and was this a raw deal for the taxpayer, Mitch? And, and what are we seeing from Form Energy right now? Oh, my gosh. Form Energy has already begun construction. It's already rising out of the ground on the former uh, Weirton Steel site, uh, of what will be a gigafactory of over 800,000 square feet. Just since we did the groundbreaking at Memorial Day and uh, as we passed Labor Day uh, the, at the end of this summer, uh, already the steel structures are uh, starting to come out of the ground and they'll be producing batteries there next year. Uh, and so what I would say is uh, this is a uh, testament to the economic creativity, vitality, and the momentum that's occurring in West Virginia. This is a fantastic transaction for West Virginia. You know, I'm happy to lay out the reasons why it's a wonderful transaction, or I'll just respond directly to your questions. But, you know, if you're basing your campaign on the fact that this is a bad deal for West Virginia, that is uh, the wrong path to go. And I think they're just maybe uninformed as to uh, the many benefits and advantages that this transaction uh, and protections that it puts in place for West Virginia. Well, let's let's revisit the basic structure of the uh, mm -hmm. um, actual deal, Mitch. What did the state give up money-wise to Form Energy? Okay, this is, and, and get, we need to get our minds around this. West Virginia is building this building and like a spec building. We're funding the construction of this building. And once it's completed, Form Energy will pay us over market-based lease rates, in other uh, over ten dollars a square foot. That's in the MOA memorandum of agreement with Form. So this, they're leasing this building from us. They have the right then, at the end of a performance period, to uh, acquire that. That building will transfer to them if. They hit all those metrics, and that metric is 750 advanced manufacturing jobs, uh, and it can transfer no sooner uh, than really a six-year performance period. So West Virginia, the taxpayer of West Virginia, is protected with a hard physical asset. This is like you go to a bank, get a loan for your house. And if you perform and pa make your payments and all those uh, components, you own the house. If you don't, the bank owns the house, and that's the same way with this transaction. West Virginia taxpayers will own this incredible asset, and we are protected with a first lien security position on this uh, uh, structure. Did the state pay cash for the structure? Well, uh, you know, the, the building is being funded with with hard dollars, yes. I mm -hmm. mean, we didn't borrow the money for uh, the transaction. We used, it, you know, the surplus funds and so forth. And as the building is constructed, we pay uh, receipt-based reimbursements. So, uh, you know, we don't just give uh, the $290 million and say, hey, uh, you know, uh, let us know when you're done. We have uh, performance metrics along the all along the path, and uh, we have a construction manager that reviews the the process. And this is, I mean, this is a world class, first class transaction. The Wall Street Journal just two days ago wrote a nice article on uh, uh, the how this structure is rising from the ashes of a former steel mill uh, and revitalizing an entire community. And what is the total cost of the building, Mitch? The 
the total cost cannot exceed $290 million uh, for the this advanced gigafactory. Um, when that, does... When does Form Energy begin to make lease payments on it? When it's complete. Uh, so the, we anticipate that, you know, you run into all kinds of construction issues and this and that. But, but what I'll say is of all the transactions we've done here recently, this one's coming out of the ground faster and quicker. And, uh, you know, I can show you pictures, send you pictures. You can put it on your websites and so forth. Uh, they're already uh, well along the path. Uh, Part of the complaint oh. yesterday also, because of the geography of the northern panhandle area being between Ohio yeah. and Pennsylvania, the concern is that of those 750 jobs, a large chunk of them may not be going to people who actually live in West Virginia. It could be somebody commuting in from Ohio or Pennsylvania, come to work here, go home, take their money with them and spend, them in, spend the money in Pennsylvania or Ohio, therefore negating gating some of the economic impact of those jobs. Is there any guarantee of how many West Virginians have to be employed at this plant? No, and there shouldn't be. There cannot be. Like any time, uh, in particular, your, you know, your radio station is based in a, in a uh, border county. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so any time we're on these border counties, there's ability for workers to transverse uh, state lines. And uh, so we, uh, you know, that's a sliver of land uh, in the northern panhandle. And are we to say we're not going to put forth any economic development efforts in our border counties in West Virginia? I mean, that just makes no sense. Uh, There are many workers that live in West Virginia that travel to these other states for uh, employment. So what's the, I mean, we hope every West Virginian uh, applies for those jobs, and they'll give extreme preference, I'm sure, to those uh, West Virginians. But uh, we shouldn't, uh, you know, build a wall around West Virginia and say you can't uh, hire anyone from outside of the state. In fact, uh, Rob, when these companies, major world-class companies, come to look at an area, they view the labor shed. Uh, and the Eastern Panhandle is one that benefits enormously from that. They have, uh, you know, a wonderful labor shed that can uh, supply workers for businesses that locate in West Virginia. Mitch, it, let's just say for the sake of argument, every one of those 750 jobs goes to somebody who lives in Ohio and Pennsylvania. I know that's not the reality of it. I understand. But just from a math equation here, if that's the case, what ways would that plant make an economic impact on the state of West Virginia if none of those 750 employees lived in West Virginia? Well, uh, I mean, it's a hypothetical that has never been. Correct. I understand that. (laughs) It's an extreme example. I do. I I admit that. Yeah. And it applies to every business that's located in in any location, in any state, right? Uh, So in hypothetical situation like that, the company is still providing uh, uh, corporate income tax, those type things for the state of West Virginia, property taxes, all those things uh, that comprise a, a business or an enterprise locating within the state. So you still have the corporations, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't know, nexus in West Virginia that provides, uh, you know, if you talk about benefits, um, uh, revenue stream uh, to the people of West Virginia. But again, the our emphasis is to create jobs, and that Ohio River corridor right now is very much uh, because of the Form Energy transaction, the Berkshire Hathaway transaction in Ravenswood, the New Core transaction in Point Pleasant, all that Ohio River Valley, they're all located on the uh, border. Um, so, you know, we want growth in every area of our state, and we can't just locate it in, you know, the very center. Billy? Yeah, uh, good morning, Mitch. A couple good of things. Morning, uh, going back to the uh, performance, six year performance basis, two questions. Uh, one, after six years, uh, will the form energy just uh, uh, be deeded the building, or do they have to pay a certain amount after the six years? No, they earn the building if they hit the performance okay. metrics, okay. which are uh, the 750 advanced manufacturing jobs mm-hmm. uh, at the facility. So, uh, they have to maintain uh, the way that that contract is written is uh, an employee uh, has to have uh, 11 months, you know, because if there's uh, some downtime or anything like that within the 
the facility to constitute a year's uh, job. A job is not considered a job unless they're on in that employment for 11 months, that position. You know, obviously there could be some, uh, you know, one, you know, worker A uh, leaves the job and worker B starts in that same position. But having said that, it does transfer to the company at the end of the performance period. Yeah, a related question is there are similarities between the arrangements you have with Form Energy and the traditional pilot program, which is spread throughout the state. Uh, differences, to be sure, but there's also some, some similarities. Well, the typical pilot program uh, the uh, generally runs for about 12 to 15 years with a reduction in, in, um, in benefits uh, uh, around seven to eight or nine years. Uh, why six years in this particular case? Yeah, the the pilot programs are tax abatement uh, b- b- implemented by the counties because those taxes tip- typically go to you know the school systems and so forth. And I, my understanding is Brook County has put forth a pilot program for Form Energy. Uh, but that's outside of the scope and, uh, of the development office. We structure the transaction on a, uh, uh, you know, on a statewide basis. Uh, and so our agreement with them was to create the jobs. And we felt really good about this because, in, in, you know, as you're properly making the comparison to other transactions, in the past, uh, the state of West Virginia would simply write a check to the company and uh, you know the Procter and Gamble transaction, the uh, Nucor commercial metals, some of those transactions, the companies received uh, money. And Mace is another this, one. Yeah. yeah. In yeah. this case, the taxpayer of West Virginia has a security interest in a building. We have an asset that you know, God forbid, worst case scenario occurs and form uh, doesn't do what they said they were going to do then we have a building that uh, we can locate the next manuf- great manufacturer in it. And we have demand like crazy for uh, manufacturing and, and structures like this. The big thing that we are missing in West Virginia is spec buildings that we can put uh, great companies in uh, immediately. We have to build these. Uh, Mitch, this is John so, Gilstrap. Uh, good morning. Mm-hmm, John. Um, I had never heard of Form Energy before it became news here in West Virginia. Do they have a track record of performance and of producing great things somewhere else? Or is- yeah, it's a great question because, you know, we don't as a state want to be uh, a speculative, uh, you know, uh, entity that funds uh, startup companies, so to speak. Now, this is a startup in the sense that it's a five-year-old company. They have 400 employees when we struck this transaction. They're in uh, various locations, Boston, San Jose, California, uh, Pennsylvania, and all of these states were fighting for this transaction. And so uh, it's, and they've raised enormous amounts of money in the private capital markets. They've raised over $750 million in the private sector. So people are putting their real money in it, not government money. They're putting real hard assets in this company because they believe in it. Furthermore, uh, is it John? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yes. Yes. Furthermore, John, one of the things to, to protect the taxpayer of West Virginia on this, we required that forms submit to us customer orders for their products. And in other words, we didn't want to just fund an idea. We wanted to see that the marketplace uh, validated their concept and ideas and products by ordering the products. And these products are uh, already pre-sold. I mean, and when you talk to um, the Form Energy train, and we have valid, you know, they're under NDA, and I'm not going to say who bought them and how much they were for and all that kind of thing. But uh, in the MOA, it does outline that we needed to have uh, certain thresholds before we proceed to the next stage that customers have ordered this product. And the customers ordering the products are um, utility scale companies. Uh, these are companies that are regulated entities. They're take or pay contracts. Um, we feel 
incredibly good about this transaction. Mitch, for clarification. I wish we could do 50 of them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. For clarification, the ones that may have forgotten, it's my understanding the product is a battery that's capable for utilities, uh, not for home use, for utilities, capable of yeah. over 100 hours of storage or 100 hours of storage. Absolutely. Is that correct? 100-hour battery storage that – uh, displaces some of the uh, products that are coming to us from, you know, unfriendly countries. Uh, this is a, a battery a technology that's based on the most prevalent resource in, a, in the world, iron, and uh, it's being located at a, facil- a former facility that has unique capability of processing iron, uh, a steel mill. So this this checks every box for economic development in West Virginia. The taxpayers are protected. We're guaranteed the jobs or we own the building. We are uh, moving forward in a new world with advanced manufacturing jobs and battery storage technologies in the 100-hour battery storage. Uh, it revitalizes a former steel mill uh, in an area that once had, you know, 10,000 employees uh, at this one facility. Now we're, we're scaling up. Um, so this this is an exciting transaction for our state, and uh, we're just thrilled to be a part of it. You've used the phrase advanced manufacturing jobs a, a few mm-hmm. times. To me, that involves, um, that implies specialized training and such. Is there a plan from Form Energy to provide training to locals for whatever is a specialized uh, yeah. manufacturing jobs they have. Can you talk about yeah, that a little another, bit? Yeah, fantastic question. One of the things that, uh, in, you know, uh, just really incentivized for them to come to West Virginia is our community and technical college training system. Uh, we have, uh, you know, the world over people, or at least national, nationally, people are looking at our community and technical college system and uh, realizing that they can structure a program to train uniquely for their employees, and West Virginia will provide that training uh, and and pl- help place those workers. And so um, th- they were ex- very much excited about the opportunity to, to use our community and technical college systems, uh, help fund those, and then provide uh, employees for their facilities. Um, they, and it's it's same same thing with commercial metals over in the eastern panhandle. They love our community and technical colleges. Uh, Mitch, is there another plant in the, anywhere in the U.S. that's going to make a comparable product at the uh, at the number that uh, Form Energy will? Not the hundred hour battery. There, there. I'm not completely aware if there if there are. I'm not aware of it. I'll say that there are some that are uh, going down the path of longer term battery storage, like the fifteen twenty hours. Uh, there's there's several companies in that market. In fact, West Virginia has one of those, uh, and the company's called Our Next Energy. Uh, we recruited them to to Ravenswood, West Virginia. So we're getting the world's attention, guys, on about how West Virginia can embrace our all of the above energy strategy with coal, natural gas, fossil fuel, uh, historic you know uh, emphasis on those entities. And then still embrace the new technologies of uh, long-term battery storage and replacing, you know, lithium cobalt batteries uh, or lithium ion batteries that are sometimes mine those minerals in unfriendly places around the world. Mitch, uh, you know, it lessens our re- it's it's a national security interest uh, from that perspective. We have uh, the ability to to store our energy with our products that we produce in America. Mitch Carmichael, our guest, Secretary of Economic Development in West Virginia, uh, former Senate President as well. Mitch, the product specs of a 100-hour battery, any idea what the size of that or weight of that uh, product is? Yes. Uh, they, uh, In fact, if you go to the Wall Street Journal, September 17th, article by Scott Patterson, uh, it, there's an outline of how the battery actually, the technology of how it works. But they're, think of them as a uh, a uh, washing machine or a dryer kind of size uh, device that uh, you can ch- daisy chain together and like a one megawatt uh, facility, which, you know, is a lot of power, would take about a, mm, I'm going to say a half acre uh, of uh, land uh, to store the, the those batteries in that facility. And, and you know, the way it works is, 
uh, when if they're it's agnostic as to how the battery receives its energy source. It could be through solar, it could be through wind, it could be through uh, coal fired generation, gas generation, however it stores that energy. Then when it's called upon to release the energy, if there's an outage, um, it it discharges that energy and it, it does so by rusting iron and then de-rusting iron. Uh, it's a technology that's been around clear back from Westinghouse days, but not commercialized. And so form is way out in front in commercializing this uh, uh, and already, as I say, has orders for companies from, uh, you know, Southern Energy, Next uh, Energy in uh, Minnesota, uh, XL Energy. These are um, – public service commission regulated utilities that have to go through a long process to order these products. And they've all ordered these uh, products from Form Energy. Very nice. Uh, final question for Mitch, Bill, or John. Anything for Mitch? No question, Mitch. Always good talking with you. Thanks for coming on. Hey, thanks, guys. And I, I just want to reiterate, thank you all for, for highlighting this uh, issue. I know people get uh, concerned about uh, this, that, whatever. The taxpayer of West Virginia is protected, and we're going to have 750 manufacturing jobs that they commit. I just want to hit this. They commit to a minimum salary of $62,500 with, in addition to that, full health care benefits. That's a big deal for an area that really mm -hmm. needs a uh, shot in the arm. Uh, Bill would like to know if we can get one of those 100-hour batteries for his Tesla. Mitch, could you get one sent over? <laughs> yeah, could you work a deal out for me, Mitch? <laughs> well, uh, you put together one of those $500 sandwiches, I'll help you. <laughs> Bill, Bill has those every day for lunch. We, we, we got a deal, Mitch. We got a deal. <laughs> See you guys. Thank okay, you. Okay, thanks, Take Mitch. Care. Have a great uh, day. It's uh, Mitch Carmichael, Secretary.